Hey guys, this is Russell with Overlanding USA. Today we're going to do a walk around of our 2015 Toyota 4Runner. The first thing I want to talk about is armor. So if you actually click on the link right up here, that'll take you to the old walk around video. The one thing that you'll notice we've changed on this truck the most is the reduction in armor. Now we did this for several reasons. Um, the most being that just the truck was a little bit too overweight and it was causing some pretty significant negative side effects as far as maintenance on the vehicle. So instead of trying to switch everything over to aluminum, we just decided to reduce all of it, go back to a stock look. Now one of the things that I decided to do when I ended up having to buy a new front bumper because we had to chip, uh, had to cut our old one in order to put the bump, front bumpers on, is I went ahead and converted the front and the rear to a trail premium bumper so that I could fit these valences on there and give it that trail premium TRD look. Once we had both of those bumpers on place, the, first, the one thing that I absolutely knew that I wanted to do from an appearance standpoint, from a front bumper standpoint, was I wanted to do the TRD Pro conversion kit. Now, this from Toyota is about an $800 kit. I was lucky enough to uh, find this company called Trail Standard Off-Road. They are an aftermarket uh, supplier of this TRD front end. Um, I simply bought this part with the letters, attached the letters to it, and then this entire part just fits on with 3M adhesive vinyl, which is the exact same as the TRD part that you would pay almost twice as much for. Simply combine that with the upper grill portion and for about 160 extra dollars I got off. They got that from Toyota of Dallas and you've completed the entire TRD Pro front end conversion, which I am a massive fan of. I really think these trucks should come stock like that but I'm not a Toyota engineer, so they obviously will never. Moving around to the under underside of the vehicle, we are running a relentless fabrication um, front bash plate. It is aluminum. Whole thing comes in a little bit under 25 pounds. I have used it pretty heavily in some places. There's some pretty significant uh, gouges and bumps on those things. It's held up really well. I don't do any heavy rock crawling, so there really wasn't any need for an extremely durable, um, extremely durable skid plate, but this one actually is extremely durable, and I'm really a big fan of it. Um, beyond that, the only other armor that we actually carry on the vehicle are our Relentless Fabrication rock sliders. I just think they're the absolute best. Those are bolt-on. Um, they, they make really great stuff. I know that if I ever actually have to use them, they'll be there for me. Um, but during 99% of the time, they're great for a step. They're great to keep door dings off your truck. Um, and it's just that added security when you're on the trip. Okay, so moving around to the engine bay, I've kept things very simple in here. I haven't added a second battery, I haven't added a switch pro panel or anything like that. I think these Toyota engines are absolutely fantastic, so I tried to keep it as stock as possible. The only real upgrade that I can say that we've done is a TRD cold air intake with a K&N filter um, that I'm running on it. I think it gives it a little bit throatier noise. I think it does give it a little bit more horsepower. Whether that's truly measurable or not, I don't know. But beyond that, I've kept the engine pretty much completely stock. The only other piece that I've actually put in this vehicle uh, that would affect the engine would be our Sprint Booster system. Um, it doesn't add any more horsepower to the vehicle. What it does is it really shores up and, and shortens the pedal uh, on the on the 4Runner. So everybody that owns a 4Runner knows it has a really laggy pedal. This brings it all the way up to the top. I think it reduces your throttle input by something like 60% in order to get the same reaction. So for me, what that really does, no more added horsepower benefit, really doesn't affect too much. Maybe affects the gas mileage just a little bit because I'm getting to speed faster. But the main thing for me is it makes the vehicle more enjoyable to drive. And at the end of the day, that's really the name of the game is making this thing more enjoyable because I'm in it all the time. It's a daily, I use it for overlanding. I've got 80,000 miles on it and I've only been driving it for three years. Okay, so covering the very last of what I would consider the engine mods, we have our snorkel. Um, this is not ARB, this is not FTS. This is actually a Amazon special. Um, got it off Amazon for 120 bucks. It is for a Land Cruiser Prado 150. Um, and it took a little bit of, of work to get it on there, but I like the fact that it's a lot shorter um, than the ARB and FTS snorkels. I wasn't a big fan of how far down they came. Um, it doesn't match the molding exactly right up here at the, at the edge. There's a small gap I can get my fingers under, but it pretty much goes away within about six inches of where that snorkel matches the body. Um, it matches it really, really well up here. You are given all the supplies in order to actually work this in. It is a fully sealed integrated snorkel. It does work. It 
it is waterproof. Um, I haven't taken it in water that deep yet, but you, I, do, I can tell that when I put my hand up here, it's sealed enough to where it actually sucks my hand up here and the engine will actually struggle if I cover it too much, um, which, is, which is what I was looking for. I just didn't feel any need to pay the $500 for the ARB and I actually have had this on for about two years now. So for me, this snorkel actually supersedes when they release the ARB. Um, I have absolutely no complaints about it. I actually recommend it because it's, it's, a, it's almost a quarter of the cost of an ARB snorkel uh, and I personally think it looks better. Coming around to the wheels, the tires, and the suspension. We're gonna start from the outside and we're gonna work our way in. First off, these are Falcon Wind Peak AT3s in a 285-7017. We were running a very aggressive mud terrain tire, but decided since we're now towing the trailer, we wanted to uh, make our fuel economy about as good as it possibly can be, so we switched back to an all-terrain. These Falcons hit the price point, as well as they have really good reviews. All that's wrapped around are gear alloy manifold rims. These are a negative 12 offset, and they basically just allow us to clear our upper control arms by pushing the wheels out a little bit farther. It gives us a little bit more aggressive look as well. Moving into the suspension, we're running a Rancho upper control arm. Uh, that's preset for two to four inches of lift, tubular design, very strong. Um, and the front shock and rear shocks are by Ironman 4x4. They're the Foam Cell Pro Series. It's a three inch shock, which to my knowledge is the largest shock you can fit on one of these forerunners. Um, they do not have reservoirs, but when you're at three inches, you really kind of don't need reservoirs. Um, they're adjustable in the front. Um, in the rear, it's just a single three inch shock, and that's paired up with our stock Toyota uh, springs with a one and a half inch Rancho spacer lift. And that basically just gives us the appropriate ride height level adjustment for when we're towing the trailer. I can hook that up and it'll be nice and low. Okay guys, so we're now in the interior of the vehicle. Um, I have kept this very Spartan as far as mods. I like the interior of the 4Runner. It's one of the reasons that I bought it. Um, the only real issue that I have on this entire vehicle on the inside mainly is my steering wheel. I've had a big issue with it fading. I am looking at some aftermarket steering wheels. They're a little bit pricey, but I think in the long run they'll be worth it. Um, beyond that, I'm just running Husky mats uh, to protect the interior. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, the inside of this 4Runner, it's very, very stock. I like it that way. Um, it's one of the reasons I bought the vehicle, and I think it's very comfortable. Beyond that, I don't plan on doing anything else to the inside of the truck. Although, for everyone that was wanting to know, I do have a patch collection. I have actually reduced it quite a lot. It used to cover the entire headliner. Uh, I had a problem, actually, with them falling off. I don't know if it's the Toyota headliner being a little bit, a little bit thin. Uh, but for the most part, I, I you know, I just wasn't a big fan of having that many patches up there, but I am gonna make a cool little patch collage that I'm gonna end up putting in my office of all my old patches. So kind of a cool thing to do instead of putting them on your headliner. Okay, so the last little bit of kit that I wanna talk about um, on this vehicle is the roof rack. Um, if you, in the last video, we were using a little bit different name brand roof rack. Since then, I've actually switched over to Rhino Rack's Pioneer platform. Uh, pretty much because I think it's the best rack on the market. It's extremely light, it's extremely durable, they have multiple options for length, and the big thing for me is it does not require you to drill holes in your roof. Uh, they have endless accessories, and I think it just looks really good. Uh, that, you know, it's very, very strong. I think it's 200 and uh, roughly 50 pounds of, um, of dynamic weight, so that's 250 pounds on the roof when you're driving, and it's 800 pounds of static weight. So that will easily cover you and potentially up to three other individuals if you were going to use it for rooftop tent. Um, so I personally think that it's it's one of the best racks on the market, if not the best, and I wish I'd bought it a long time ago. Okay guys, so that's been the walk around of our 2015 Toyota 4Runner. I hope you saw some things you liked with the truck. It's been a labor of love for me for the last three years. It's gone from very, very stock to very, very built, and now back to very, very stock. Um, one thing that I would recommend to anybody that's looking to get in and build an overland vehicle is to get out and use it while it's stock. Figure out what you need. 
get stuck a few times. Just make sure you're going with a buddy that can get you out. Once you figure out what you need, you're going to build a truck that's a lot more appropriate for you. You're going to save yourself a lot of money. You're going to save a lot of wear on your vehicle with uh, throwing stuff on there that you don't need. And at the end of the day, I think you're going to be a lot happier with the build of your truck. At least that's what I found from my own personal experience. So I really appreciate you watching the video, guys. If you thought this was great, make sure you leave a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It really means a lot to us and it really helps us grow the channel. As always, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description for everything that we've added to this truck so that if you decided that you wanna buy it or do more research for yourself, you can go ahead and pick it up and, and find it down below. Beyond that, thanks for watching. This has been Rustin. See you in the next video.